don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. Do you understand that? Turn, turn the, the friggin', friggin frogs, frogs gay. Serious <laughs> crap gay. Frogs friggin' frogs. Bam. It's not funny. I'm gonna say it real slow for you. Gay frogs. <laughs> One organ that is particularly susceptible to fluoride buildup is the pineal gland, the part of our brain responsible for regulating sleep and reproductive hormones. Sometimes known as the third eye, this small gland has been linked to metaphysical abilities by many cultures throughout history. Philosopher and scientist René Descartes believed the pineal gland to be the principal seat of the soul. It is estimated that 40% of Americans have significant amounts of fluoride buildup in this gland by age 17. While tooth decay has declined in the US since fluoridation was introduced, countries which do not add fluoride to their water have seen the same rate of decline in tooth decay. This data from the World Health Organization implies that factors other than fluoridated water are contributing to the overall improvement of dental health worldwide. You're on notice that poison is being put in the water, uranium, radium, lead, arsenic, mercury, sodium fluoride. You can, you can laugh and say fluoride's good for you because you've been brainwashed that it is, but all these other things are admittedly poisonous and bad. We have hundreds of government documents, textbooks, white papers, where for over 80 years, the elite of the Western world have talked about adulterating food and water to sicken and sterilize the population for the purpose of eugenics. In the Nuremberg trials, it came out that the Nazis were adding sodium fluoride to the water supply in the labor camps and death camps to make the population more docile and controllable. There had been hundreds of university studies before Hitler even came to power. This is a form of forced medication. They admit that one part per million of sodium fluoride more than doubles the chance of bone cancer in boys and men. It is an epidemic. The sperm count has dropped in the Western world exponentially. Even the government has been predicting within another generation almost everyone is going to be sterile. This is the globalist religion. This is their philosophy. They want the planet for themselves. The UN has said that their stated plan is an 80% population reduction. You've heard Ted Turner call us useless eaters and feeders and say that 80% of us need to be killed. You've heard Prince Philip say he wants to come back as a virus uh, to kill the majority of the world population. Dr. Eric Bianca, Peter Singer, it's all over the news where they tell us that we should only have one child because more than one is bad for the environment and that the recession is good for lowering our carbon footprint. This is the big secret. We live in a scientific dictatorship. It wasn't long ago when UN Agenda 21 was considered to be a conspiracy theory. Now, not the policies, the implementation of Agenda 21, but in fact, the existence of Agenda 21 was seen as a conspiracy theory. What is the history of the conspiracy theory in terms of it being almost weaponized? precisely the case. In 1967, the, uh, the CIA, in a memo, actually used the term, suggested that the term conspiracy theory be used in over 250 of these CIA pretty much run and controlled media outlets to weaponize, to be weaponized, but also to throw off people who are questioning at that particular time the Warren Commission. That the phone is constantly exchanging data with a local cell tower, and this would be radiating through a person's body whether it's in your purse, whether it's in your front or your back pocket, whether it's in your shirt pocket, this radiation is breaking through the blood-brain barrier and through the gut-brain barrier. The reality is that Google surveillance has no limits. They track literally everything you do, everywhere you go, and not just on the internet, but even in real life. So we're in this ridiculous situation where we go to work, maybe two jobs even, and we come home and we're exhausted. So we plop down on our new couch and watch TV, and the commercials tell us, you suck. So you gotta go to the mall to buy something to feel better, and then you gotta go to work more to pay for the stuff you just bought. So you come home and you're more tired, so you sit down and you watch more TV, and it tells you to go to the mall again, and we're on this crazy work-watch-spend treadmill. We have before us the opportunity to forge, for ourselves and for future generations, a new world order. A world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders.
Hey, hello. Yo, bro, put away your phone, man. Put away your computer. Put away your Netflix. All those stuff. The government's always spying on us, man. The government is trying to depopulate us, and it's all real. The new world order stuff, man, it's all real. Trumps and Hillary, they're all the same. They're being controlled. And you know what? Bush did done in 9 11. And the Illuminati stuff, it's all real. The satanic one where religion is in charge. And don't drink them water, man. They're all poisoned. They have turned what, those frog gay, man. And just grab your gun. And I'm like, we gotta defend ourselves. Hey, hey, whoa, hey. Calm down, okay? Calm, calm down, David. Calm down. Calm down, it's fine. Don't, don't be crazy. Don't act like a conspiracy theorist, okay? Yeah, just like, live life and trust the system, man. Okay, bye.